Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be going through a bunch of cream products, some new, some I've never tried before, new, and a few that I'll be revisiting. Woo! I feel like every time I come to do makeup, it's because I'm looking for a space to relax and just feel good about something in my life. I've always felt anxiety, but it wasn't until I was in my late 20s, early 30s that I actually found out or I was able to identify that it was anxiety. Uh, I just didn't know what it was, which sounds absurd now, but yeah, I just, I didn't identify it. And the last few days I've been feeling a lot of anxiety and I think it's been a combination of, I mean, this t I, if 2020 could be a feeling so far, I would say it's like anxiety. <laughs> Why am I feeling anxious? I mean, there's the pandemic, the Black and Indigenous Lives Matter movement, which we need to continue to keep talking about and educating and moving forward with that, which I've been trying to do on a large scale, but also micro. I have been doing work to spread the word <laughs> about companies that support the United Conservative Party in Alberta, which is where I live, because uh, they are slowly stripping away our healthcare uh, education and the rights of indigenous people. They recently passed a, a bill, which I guess is now a law. It's called the Critical Infrastructure Act, which basically makes it so that we can't protest because they can arrest anyone on public property, essentially. So that limits indigenous people from protesting about the pipeline, which some people may or may not know. This is like a sort of Canada centric uh, issue, although I, the Dakota pipeline in the US, so that's also relevant to the US. <laughs> so there's that, and I'm just feeling like this entire anxiety about it because I am not anti small local business. I am not trying to tear down local businesses. I just want to let people know that, know about where they're shopping and that their dollars are going to fund a party that is taking away the rights and social services that we all need. Ha, huh. so there's that. This has just been a real reckoning for myself in terms of who I, uh, in terms of who I wanna work with. And if I say that pandemic, why do I say that? Yeah, I, and I mean, currently being out of work, I guess, in a sense. I mean, I'm still working, but it's, I don't have anything paid coming up, so. Yeah, that's the fun stuff. <laughs> of feeling anxiety. Shall we have some fun instead? Oh, <laughs> I remembered the other, the third piece of anxiety is just watching the whole Shane Dawson, Jeffree Star thing unravel and having never bought any Morphe or Jeffree Star makeup and always, maybe I should start doing my makeup and we'll talk about this. Okay, I'm going to start with some of Charlotte Tilbury's Magic Cream as a base. Since I'm doing all cream products, uh, I'm going to start with my face makeup because I don't think the cream products will, for, in terms of my eyeshadow, will fall on my face, so. I feel like this video is gonna be so disjointed, but that's okay. This is just one of those days where, oh my God, and also, guys, I'm in my office and it's not blue. <laughs> my hair is probably gonna start irritating me pretty quick here, so I'm just gonna put it up with a little slip silk pony. I'm gonna do one pump of the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Hydrating Primer. This is Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer in Natural Skin Perfector. But I also wanna put in a Bare Glow Bobbi Brown Extra Bare Glow Illuminating Moisture Bomb into the mix too. So I'm mixing all three of those things together in some sort of congealed little, hmm. Decent match, okay, okay. I put this on my right hand, and yet I am right-handed. So now I have to use this brush with my left hand. Talk about not planning things well. <laughs> I like this mixture together. I am all for tinted products versus heavy foundation. I just prefer the way my skin looks, but also I prefer the way my skin feels. And I don't typically feel like I need a ton of stuff on my face. This is sitting very nicely. It is not accentuating the pores on my nose, which is what I love to see. I would definitely use this mixture again. 
when I want a little bit more coverage, I will put the Fenty primer with the Fenty Pro Filter Hydrating Longwear Foundation in 185. And then a splash of the Glossier Perfecting Skin Tint together. And then do a couple of dots of this in the areas that I want highlight in. And I think it looks beautiful. But that's just me. <laughs> Okay, skin looking good. So let is, let's work on these brows. I have the Benefit Cabrow Cream Gel Brow Color with Brush. I also typically use pencil more than I do gel or creme. Anyway, going back to my stories. I was around in the MySpace days of Jeffree Star. I was punk at the time. I mean, once punk, always punk, am I right? <laughs> anyway. I was punk at the time, so I was really drawn to his power poppy looking aesthetic and I followed him for a bit. And then there was a turning point when he posted all of these a set of photographs of him like puking up, um, like not actually puking, but just like pretending to be vomiting uh, Cheerios. And I was just like, not for me anymore. I don't know, it's like I was a punk and I never understood like the being edgy for like points or whatever the heck these people were doing, especially Jeffree Star. So it really turned me off back then. And in all honesty, I spent most of my life not on YouTube. I didn't watch it. I was more into fashion bloggers and like live journal counts of punk makeup and that kind of stuff. So I never really ventured onto YouTube aside to watch music videos or the random comedy sometimes like, oh my God, shoes, obviously. So I didn't know who Shane Dawson was, didn't know who he was until Mm, I want to say, when did the Bunny um, Graveyard Girl series come out? I'll look it up. That is the first time I'd ever heard of him. And the only reason why I stumbled upon that video was because I actually went to the museum that bought that cursed doll from Bunny. <laughs> the one that she talks about in the series as being like super creepy. I'll insert photos. It's a museum in Southern Alberta called the Museum of Fear and Wonder and they have like weird wax figures and it's curated by these two brothers that are artists and it's spectacular. It is so well done and so incredibly interesting and they take you on a tour of it and tell you about all the pieces and like it's so creepy in the best way. Anyway, I had discovered that series because while we were there, or it was maybe just shortly before we went. Either way, it was right around that time that I saw that series. Maybe it was before, I can't remember. Oh my God, I'm getting my timeline screwed up. Anyway, it was within the last two years. I saw that documentary and I was like, oh, okay. I guess Shane is like the YouTuber documentarian, like that's his thing. I mean, I didn't go back and look at his other videos because like, I'm an adult. There's only so much time that I can waste watching stuff and I'm not gonna go through someone's back catalog, you know? Like it's just, I don't wanna watch bad quality photos or uh, videos. So I never went further than that. And then I started watching different YouTubers like Abby Williamson and Amanda and, oh, Smoky Glow and started getting more educated on what the past, like the history of what's been going on. I mean, I knew all that Jeffree Star stuff, which is why I was always very hesitant to, um, I don't wanna say believe his shtick, but something to that effect, I guess. I'm going to try the Wonder Full Brow from Rimmel. We'll see how this goes. But I wanna pencil these in a little bit, and I know that's cheating because pencil, but guys, just, let me have it, please. This is the Fenty Beauty Brow MVP in Dark Ash Blonde. So yes, I did watch more of Shane's series and that is definitely on me for not doing more research on who he was as a person prior to his beloved documentarian bullshit. I feel like I keep working on these brows and I just keep making them bigger and bigger and bigger. This is the Rimmel Wonderful Brow in 001 Light. It has the same sort of spoolie as Boy Brow, which I do not have enough hair, so I'm going to be taking off a bunch of this product. 
grave in it. Okay, that's actually very nice. I mean, aside from like the little zhuzh that I, okay, now things are getting bad. <laughs> ah! Well, that was a good new discovery. I don't know how long I've had this and haven't tried it, but it says 24 hour waterproof brow mascara with fibers. Hmm, it's a nice little drugstore find. Could use a little concealer. This is gonna be pretty Fenty heavy just because I was sent a bunch of new stuff from them and so excited to try it. I was also sent the Charlotte's Magic Lip Oil Crystal Elixir. It took a while to actually get the product onto the ball to put on your lips. Sort of has like a vanilla y. Sorry, I just keep putting it on my lips. I'm like, Rrr. vanilla y. Hokey dokey. Okay, I'm going to conceal a little bit of my under eyes and I'm going to use the Bobbi Brown Ivory Creamy Concealer. Just cause I find that when I use the Glossier one, I get a lot of mascara transfer onto my under eyes and it just accentuates my bags. So that is something to keep in mind if you're using that product. And I'm also using the Bobbi Brown Concealer Blending Brush. Yeah, it's just astounding to me that white men can continue to be incredibly racist and incredibly misogynistic and I don't know I can I say pedophilic here but like the fact that Shane Dawson's humor humor went unchecked that long I mean it hasn't been like completely unchecked people have been talking about it but actually taken seriously for that long is really disappointing and also just mind-boggling let me put it this way shane dawson and i are contemporaries in the sense that i am i think he's 31 i'm 33 so we are of the same age i have never treated children like that i have never made jokes about children like that i have been on the internet as a influencer for 11 years, I have never done blackface. The fact that that was humor, I can't even imagine doing that. Oh, it just sickens me really. And then Jeffree Star using someone's possible trauma as social currency and as a way to, it's like a bargaining chip. Whatever this voice memo is, it's disgusting. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Like it's, it is astonishing to me. And the IG live that Shane Dawson did after Todd, and I'm not saying that Toddy's totally in, uh, innocent in all this. That video should have never been released. It shouldn't have. Bye sister, shouldn't have been released. It, it, it is wild that that even came out. And um, however, I do, I can relate to being sexually assaulted and feeling deeply for other people that have as well, but also just actually being coerced and manipula manipulated into doing things that you wouldn't normally do. And even as an adult, like that's a thing. It's like coercive control is, and manipulation is a thing. And it doesn't matter how old you are. It's a matter of being susceptible and a bumblebee just like flew into my window and now someone's cutting their grass. Sorry if you hear that in the background. <laughs> Like it doesn't matter how old you are, you can still be manipulated. Think about all of the elderly people that fall for the, the phone scams uh, and email scams. It's just because they are, people are more vulnerable to different things. Something to keep in mind. Again, not exempting her from blame. She still made the video. And I think we need to still hold her accountable for it. Let's start by doing some bronzer. Fenty cream bronzer, Blon bronzer, jeez Louise. Bronzer in 03 Macchiato. I'm using the Fenty Beauty 125 face brush for it. I love these Fenty brushes. They are so soft. And there's just something about this color of pink that just really does it for me. But back to that lie that Shane Dawson did. First of all, he couldn't be bothered to speak at all when the Smith family, and rightfully so, 
called oh my god pookie on my nose first of all he went dead silent when the smith family started calling out and admonishing him for that video that surfaced of him doing inappropriate things in front of a photo of their then 11 year old child i'm sure i mean i don't even have to tell you this stuff i am assuming that it is probably been seen or heard because it has been on the internet a while now he couldn't talk to them about any of that or like stand up to them but the second the second toddy drops a video suddenly he's on live and completely unhinged disputing her story and then also just dismissing her talking about being a victim of sexual assault a survivor of sexual assault and rolling his eyes at her like this is part of the problem too that is that eye roll was a hundred percent misogyny personified and clear indication that he is not the empath he claims to be which i mean if we haven't figured that out yet lord help us that video screamed to me a man becoming unhinged because truths about his past and his actual person are being revealed and and they see that yes things things that they love and appreciate money could be lost and as i was watching that like two minute clip of him losing his shit on igtv or sorry on his ig live i was brought back to a time when i was watching c-span when brett kavanaugh was being it was that trial kind of i guess or a hearing, I don't know what you would call it. Let me look here. So it was it was a hearing and it was Brett Kavanaugh, a hearing for Brett Kavanaugh to be um, appointed a Supreme Court justice. And bless Christine, Dr. Christine Blasey Ford, who on all counts was a credible, credible survivor victim, had a credible story, and yet she still wasn't believed. She's a freaking doctor. Anyway, I was just, when I was watching this Shane Dawson thing, I was brought back to seeing Brett Kavanaugh seething because he was getting held accountable and called out and not getting what he wanted, which is the sec, this is like, the second you tell a white man that he is not allowed to do something, unfair, 100% unfair. I'm obviously being facetious. I've been bronzing for like 20 years, but it's just looking very nice. I think this is a good color for me. Anyway, he just started losing it and just being so rude. And uh, I mean, maybe I can insert a clip of him being like, I liked beer and I still like beer. Just wild stuff, you know? I'm just using a 220 precision brush to do a little nozzle contour. I'm buffing it out with my finger. I don't know how much this is actually working, but we're just having fun. This is this is my time to de-stress. I, I got major Brett Kavanaugh vibes from Shane Dawson right before Rylan told him to stop filming or stop being on live, which why did you do that anyway? Why were you on live to begin with? Ooh, ooh. We got ooh, rose latte. We got, these are the Fenty cream blushes, uh, Petal Poppin, and ooh, Fuego Flush. I know there was a lot of mentioning that these were so much smaller than the bronzer. On the one hand, I'm like, yeah, that is quite a big difference, but I also think that you do use bronzer more. Like it's just the surface area that a bronzer goes on is definitely larger than a blush, so. I like the orange one. So we're gonna try Fuego Flu, Fuego Flush, Fuego Flush. There's that one more. I'm feeling this like a lot. I'm gonna put a little bit of petal popping on my cheeks as well. And maybe a little, little bitty on my nose. So yeah, those are just some of my thoughts, I guess. There's just so many incredible creators who have broken down this story in full videos that I think are worth watching. Smoky Glow, Abby Williamson, you know, the gang. 
bunch of YouTubers that I feel like deserve a lot more subscribers than they actually have right now because their content is always solid. Now, this next product I am super stoked on because I think it's going to be a replacement for my almost done Glossier Haloscope, Haloscope, whatever, in quartz. Every, sometimes when I'm finishing a cream product, I always like take a peek and see like how much of the container is actually the product. It's like this much of this container, which is like kind of bullshit. <laughs> I mean, this is kind of the same thing, isn't it? I really love the way, the look of the Glossier Haloscope, Haloscope, whatever you want to call it. So I was really stoked to see Fenty come out with this matchsticks in shade Pearl, which I thought I wouldn't like because it has like a pink a shimmer to it. I don't know if you can even see that. Anyway, I saw someone post about it and I was like, nope, that's definitely for me. So here I am and it's smooth like butter. The thing I do like about this in comparison to the Glossier too, is that the Glossier has like the gel in the center of it, whereas this is just the whole thing with a gloss kind of to it. So it has like a glossy finish to it, glossy sheen. I feel like this spreads on nicer so far. I'm liking it. It's like silk going on. So yeah, those are some of my thoughts on the ongoing internet YouTube world. I'm just finding it incredibly stressful to watch. Let us move on to my eyes. This is the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion in Minor Sin. Now I don't know how long I've had this. It's probably been too long. And we're gonna give it a try. My eyes start burning, then I'll know it's time to throw it out. I have quite a few cream eyeshadow products that I'm excited about. I have a Laura Mercier Taupe Caviar Stick Eye Color in Metallic Taupe. I've already used this once and oof, so nice. I also have a couple of Maybelline Bouncy Eyeshadows. They are a Canadian drugstore brand. And I also have the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize and uh, Betty. All right, let's dive in. Like, look at that. It's so stunning. And I love the fact that you just put it on and it's like, that's it, you know? Like I could just wear this like this with some mascara and call it a day. Also, I have to say, I did really appreciate Samantha Ravindall's video in regards to Shane Dawson, her response to him. And to that, I also say, again, with his misogyny showing, his notepad message that he tweeted out about the beauty community being dramatic and da 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 da. To that I say, why are you mansplaining a community that you were never really a part of? Because that's what that was. It was a mansplation of the beauty community to itself. I'll just leave that there. So that is the Laura Mercier caviar stick. Super easy. I think it's beautiful. The Charlotte Tilbury Betty. They're actually quite a similar shade, I would say. The Charlotte Tilbury is a little bit brassier maybe, and the caviar is more, not pink, but in that family. All right, I'm gonna leave it at that. Oh, maybe not. Okay. Ooh, and I do wanna still use the Annabelle Bounce. I got a MAC brush in 230SE. The one problem about cream eyeshadows is that they're one of those things that you really actually have to use up quickly, otherwise they perish. I'm into that, but you know what else would make that really fun too? Is going in with a fly liner from Fenty in Lady Lagoon. Great name. Oh, oh yeah. I feel like maybe I should have put this down first. Oh no, it is building on top of the cream. I think there's just one thing that I have been learning as of late is that remaining neutral when it comes to all of this stuff, whether it's issues in the YouTube community or even locally in politics, there's just no more room for it anymore. Because by remaining neutral, and not taking a stance, you're complicit in wrongdoing in a sense. Does that make sense? See, and me saying that is undermining the things that I am saying, because I am 
trying to water down my feelings by being like, does that make sense? No, I said words. They have meaning, it made sense in some variety. I'm basically saying that, yeah, remaining neutral is not an option anymore because so much terrible stuff is going down and the only way to change things is to get people to talk about it because otherwise shit just stays the same and nothing changes and that's a problem. Unless there's actual pressure, then nothing changes. And if nothing's actually affecting their bottom line, it especially doesn't change because that's how a lot of people see the world is how it'll affect their income flow. I think I want to blend out this a little bit more on the top, just to give it a little bit more. I will be curling my eyelashes and then putting on Climax Mascara from NARS. So the one problem with me with like cream eyeshadows is like the transfer that happens. So typically when I do a cream eyeshadow, I will just stick to one color because of that. But maybe I'm doing it wrong. Maybe I may need to look into this. I'm just tired of being tired and I'm tired of being disappointed in people and that is coming from me, a white woman. So imagine how tired people in the beauty community who are black and indigenous and people of color, how frustrated they must feel right now. I can only imagine, especially seeing Jeffree Star, a racist, time and time again, just making more and more Skrilla and being terrible to his fans. Feeling pretty happy about those eyes. Kind of some, some fun. However, I feel like I could do a little bit of something underneath. So I'm gonna go back in with Betty. I'm assuming it's Betty Davis that they are referring to. And I'm going to use a Stilla brush in a number 13, which is a flat liner brush on my under eyes. This is the Sephora Precision Point Shadow. So as far as I'm concerned, you can't stand for the Black Lives Matter movement and also still be a consumer of Jeffree Star cosmetics. With that said, if products have already been bought, then I mean, use them. Don't advertise it, but use them. And don't continue to purchase from him. Like boycotts can be effective, guys. I am going to use the Benefit Roller Eye Bright Pencil for the underneath here, just to open up these eyes a little bit more. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know what's insane to me is the fact that my lower lashes are actually much nicer than my upper lashes. And now that I've gone full twiggy on my bottom lashes. Mmm, lips! I was sent two of the new Fenty um, lipsticks. I have Tang Fang or Makeout Break. Just try Makeout Break first. I mean, that's pretty lovely. <laughs> Okay, I like that. Should we should we just take a peek at Kang thing just in case? I mean that's kinda nice. I think I like both. I think this this is nice. I dig it. Do I love the creasing on the eye shadow? No. But I can live with it. Alright, thank you so much for <laughs> listening to me blather on about uh, the things that are making me anxious and the new products that I tried out. I definitely will be using that bronzer over and over and over again and I do like this eyeliner a ton. I would say overall everything I used today I was pretty impressed with aside from like the eyeshadow transfer. I kind of expect that with cream eyeshadows at this point so I don't know how to fix that. I am not the biggest fan of the Cabral. The packaging, I mean, it's just like kind of a lot, you know? I feel like a little sorcerer or something. I prefer Benefit's Precisely My Brow pencil, but I did like the gel from Rimmel. And all of the face products, I would say were a win. I feel slightly better having put on makeup and spilled some of the things that were bothering me. So I hope maybe this was cathartic for you too. As always, thanks again for watching and spending some time with me, some quality time. And I'm so sorry for the changing light. I think I just need to figure that out soon. Thanks so much for joining me and I will probably be seeing you sometime soon because baby's got a lot of stress. <laughs> All right, doodles. Hey, it's just me sitting on my floor uh, quickly having some thoughts as I'm editing some video. And the way that I would describe my anxiety right now is like I am on a rowboat that has sprung a leak and I'm trying to bail myself out with like a thimble. All right.
that's that's all <laughs> bye